Yes, guys, read the question number 13. The summarized balance sheet of R&P for the year ending 31st March 2012 are as under R&P2 balance sheets are given to you with preference share capital as well as equity share capital and the following information is provided profit before tax, taxation, preference dividend and equity dividend. This is the information that is provided to you. The equity shares of both the companies are quoted in the market and both the companies are carrying out similar manufacturing operations. R Limited absorbed P Limited on the, as on 31st March 2012 and the terms of absorption are as under. The preference shareholders of P will receive 8% preference shareholders of R sufficient to increase their income of preference shareholders of P by 10%. What is the preference dividend in P? P has 10% preference shares for 4 lakhs. 10% preference shares in the sense preference dividend every year is 40,000. I want to increase their income by 10%. So 40,000 plus 10%, 44,000. So 44,000 should be the preference dividend earned by the preference shareholder with a yield of 8%. So 5,50,000 is your preference shares. That is purchase consideration to preference share capital. Next, B. The equity shareholders of P will receive equity shares of R on the following basis. Equity shares of P will be valued by applying the earnings per share with 75% of the PE of R based on the results of 2011-12 of both the companies. Guys, we need to apply EPS into P. EPS, how do we calculate for P? Already the information is given the below the balance sheet in a table. We can use this information and calculate what is the profits available to equity shareholders divided by number of equity shares. You will get what is the EPS multiplied by I need PE. And he's saying P of P, check then, the equity shareholders of P will be valued by applying earnings per share of P with 75% P of R. That means P of P limited is equal to 75% of the P of R. So that means my first thing I have to calculate what is P of R. 75% will give me P of P. How do you get P of R check? Market price per share of R limited is already given to you as 40. What is the P ratio formula? Price by earnings. So MPS by EPS. So MPS by EPS. Already MPS is given to you for R limited. You can calculate EPS of R. With the information given. So MPS by EPS you will get P ratio of R. If I apply 75% of the P of R. You will get P of P. Calculate EPS multiplied by P. You will get the value per share. The number of equity shares to be issued to the shareholders of P. Will be based on the above market value. That means R limited is issuing shares at 40 rupees. This point number 4 is very very important. In addition to the equity shares, 8% preference shares of R limited will be issued to the equity shareholders to make up for the loss in income arising from exchange of shares based on the dividend of the year 2011-12. To understand the adjustment, we have to first start the problem. Then I will explain what the adjustment is all about. But what he is saying is the purchase consideration to preference share the equity shareholders is not just in the form of equity shares but it is also in the form of 8% preference shares. In addition to the equity shares that means equity shareholders are getting equity shares plus they are also getting 8% preference shares will be issued to make up for the loss in income arising from exchange of share based on the dividend. How much dividend did they get in P? They got an equity dividend in P. In the table it is already given as 1,92,000. After the acquisition by R in P. So after you see that the purchase consideration is settled by R. You need to identify what are the total number of shares that R is allotting to P. Check R share capital. R share capital is 24 lakhs. How much preference dividend did he give? 2,88,000. So 288,000 was the preference, sorry, equity dividend that he has given on 2 lakh for, or 24 lakhs. That means basically he has given 12% dividend. Basically he has given 12% dividend. The same 12% dividend if it is granted to the shareholders of P after the acquisition in R, find out what is the dividend they will receive. If they were not taken over in P limited, they would have got 192. After the takeover, how much are they getting in R limited? Compare these two, then you will observe what is the loss. That loss should be made good by issue of 8% preferences. 
8% preference shares in the sense for every share I will get 8 rupees of dividend. So to make up for the loss how many preference shares you have to issue that is purchase consideration and preference shares to equity shareholders. Assets and liabilities are revalued. Once you see revaluation the simple logic is it is always by purchase. For the next two years there is no increase in equity dividend is expected. You are required to set out the purchase consideration and the balance sheet. So slightly lengthy question because purchase consideration is lengthy. So let's stand. Put down a heading purchase consideration. We are calculating using P model. But don't write the method guys. Let's write purchase consideration because we have multiple methods which are used. Purchase consideration. I will start with the first point. First there is a table given. Below that equity shares are quoted in the market. Are proposed to take over P limited and the terms of absorption are as under. Under point number 3 the first point that he is talking about is regarding preference shares. PC to preference shareholders. Come on what did he say? The preference shareholders of P will receive 8% preference shares of R sufficient to increase the income of the preference shareholders of P limited by 10%. So I will start with that. What is the preference dividend in P limited? Preference dividend in P. In P it is a 10% preference share having a share capital of 4 lakhs Preference dividend is 40,000 plus increase in dividend how much he is expecting an increase of 10% on the dividend so this would become 4,000 increase. So preference dividend in R to preference shareholders of P. So all the preference shareholders of P want 44,000 as a preference dividend in R limited. Yield per share in R check what is the yield per share they will receive 8% preference shares purchase consideration to preference shareholders in 8% preference shares of R limited 44,000 divided by 8% should be 5,50,000 this PC to preference shareholders. Continuing then, point number A was preference shareholders. I completed it. Point number B is PC to equity shareholders. How many purchase considerations the equity shareholder gets? Is getting two things in equity shares of R and as well as in preference shares of R. PC in equity shares of R. Read. Equity shareholders of P limited will be valued by applying earnings per share in P with 75% of the P, P of R based on the results of 2011-12 where market price of R is 40 rupees per share and the number of shares to be issued to the shareholders of P will be based on such market value. First we need to get EPS of both the companies. Maintain two columns R and P. With the information given try to identify what is the EPS. Point number one. Profit before tax. My PBT is 10,64,000. 
नेक्स्ट डिडक्ट टैक्स लेस टैक्सेशन फोर लैक्स टू लैक्स दिस विल गिव मी पैट सिक्स लैक्स सिक्सटी फोर थाउजेंड टू लैक्स एट्टी थाउजेंड I want EPS, so I need profits available to equity shareholders. So deduct preference dividend from this. Once you deduct preference dividend, the balance should be profits available to equity shareholders. Come on, preference dividend is sixty four thousand and forty thousand. Profits available to equity shareholders are six lakhs and two lakh forty. Divided by number of equity shares. What is the number of equity shares? Ten rupee share, two lakh forty and one lakh twenty. EPS. In the case of R. It is two point five, and this is two. We have the EPS figures for R Limited. He is also given in point number two the market price per share as forty. Using this formula, you can calculate P of R. P of R limited is equal to market price per share divided by earnings per share. Market price per share 40 already given in the question. EPS of R, R EPS is 2.5 divided by 2.5. This was 16. 16 is the P of R. But whom am I trying to value? I am trying to value P. To get P, he says, you apply the earnings available to equity share earnings per share of P limited with 75 percent of the P of R. You got P of R, so he says that P of P limited is 75 percent of this. Seventy five percent of P of R. Seventy-five percent of sixteen is twelve. Market price per share of P Limited is equal to EPS into P. Now check what is the market price per share in P. So what is the earnings per share in P? Two. What is the P of P? Twelve. Two into twelve value per share in R is twenty four. So my purchase consideration in equity shares of R is equal to how many shares are there in P? P limited number of shares are one lakh twenty. Each share is valued at how much? Twenty four rupees. One lakh twenty thousand shares. Market price per share is valued at twenty four. That is EPS into P. You will get purchase consideration to be settled in the form of equity shares of R. I think this is two lakh eighty eight thousand. Twenty eight lakh eighty thousand. I'm sorry. Yeah. Twenty eight lakh eighty thousand. 
How is he settling this? Point number three. The shares are to be issued to the equity shareholders of PE will be based on the same market value. Issue price per share in R is equal to 40 only. Number of equity shares to be issued by R limited is equal to divided by 40. I think this is 72,000. That is one part of the PC. Because PC to equity shareholders is not only in the form of equity shares of R, but also they are receiving PC in preference shares, PC in 8% preference shares of R. For that you need to read. In addition to equity shares, that means other than the 72,000 shares which are issued to them, 8% preference shares of R Limited will be issued to the equity shareholders of P to make up for the loss in the income arising on the above exchange of shares based on the dividend for the year 2011-12. How much dividend is R Limited issuing on 24 lakhs of share capital if they pay 288,000? Basically, they are paying only 12% dividend. Now, Considering that 12% dividend, now observe, if I have 72,000 shares in R Limited, how much dividend I will receive? 72,000, each share into 10 rupees, into 12%. That will give you the amount, yeah, that will give you what is the amount of equity dividend received by the shareholders of P. So, it should be 86,400. But, I received only 86,400 as equity dividend. What was the dividend I was receiving in P? In PE, I was receiving 1,92,000. Now, I got only 86,400. That means, basically, I am falling short by nine, yeah, 1,5,600. That is the income which I am losing. That is what he is talking about. Loss in income arising on above exchange of share. I was supposed to receive 1,92,000 from PE. But after acquisition by R, I am getting only 86,400. Balance loss will be made up by issue of 8% preference shares. Go on. Equity dividend in P one lakh ninety two thousand equity dividend to shareholders of P. After acquisition Calculate the holders are receiving 72,000 shares 10 rupee share 12 percent dividend eighty-six four hundred. Loss in income On the basis of dividend is one lakh five thousand six hundred. He is making up this loss yield per preference share in P eight percent. That's it. Purchase consideration in preference shares of R Limited. Divided by 8, you will get the answer. 13 lakhs 20,000. We are done with the PC computation completely. PC to preference shareholders, PC to equity shareholders, 
under equity shares, PC in equity shares and PC in preference shares. Too many PCs there. Write a summary of PC so that we will get the total PC. Discharge of PC. PC to preference shareholders. They are only receiving 8% preferences. 8% preference share capital 5 lakhs 50,000. PC to equity shareholders. Equity share capital. How much equity share capital are they getting? 7 lakh 72,000 shares. Each share of 10 rupees 7 lakhs 20,000. They are issued at what price? 40. That means 30 rupees premium included there. So get the amount of securities premium as well. 72,000 shares into 30. 21 lakh 60,000 securities premium. Finally, they are also getting 8% preference shares. 8% preference share capital that they get is 13 lakhs 20,000. I think this is 47 lakh 50 thousand is a total PC. Yes guys, once we get the PC, go for the nature of amalgamation. There are some revaluations given there. So it will be called as a purchase method. Nature of amalgamation and method of accounting. Identifying the nature of amalgamation and method of accounting carries a mark guys. It carries a mark. Just writing those two statements. Whenever it is a purchase method, what do we have to calculate? Goodwill or capital reserve? So go on. How do you get goodwill or capital reserve? We need to compare net assets. So calculate net assets with PC. Compare net assets with PC. So first I will come with the calculation of assets. There is some revaluation which are given to you. P limited assets. First one is fixed assets. Book value of fixed assets is 27 lakhs. Fixed assets are increased by 1 lakh. So my fixed assets will be now valued at 28 lakhs. Next asset is a current asset. Book value is 23. Decreased by 2. 21. Forty nine lakhs less outside liabilities.
only one outside liability that is current liability current liability is, there is no change is there yes there is a change it should be decreased by 10,000 so the total value given there is 10 lakhs so if it is reduced by 40,000 9 lakhs 60,000 I'll give you net assets. Net assets taken over is thirty nine lakh forty thousand. And I'm comparing this net assets with the PC. Forty seven lakh fifty thousand. So my essence is goodwill. I paid more PC eight lakh ten. The information should be sufficient for you to draft the balance sheet. Balance sheet of R Limited as on 31st March 2012 or 1st April 2012. Equity and liabilities shareholder funds. Share capital, equity share capital already existing in the balance sheet for R is 24 lakhs plus now I issued 7 lakh 20 so this should be 31 lakhs 20 thousand. 8% preference share capital now already existing is 8 lakhs. Now what you issued is 5 lakh 50 plus 13 lakh 20 total is 18 lakh 70 18 lakh 70 plus 8 lakhs 26 lakh 70 thousand reserves and surplus securities premium Twenty one lakh sixty thousand, and there is also a reserve existing in the balance sheet for thirty lakhs. Now I get a current liabilities, there is no non current at all. 
Current liability is a simple addition of both that will be 28 lakhs. I'm sorry, 9 lakh 60 is the amount. 9 lakh 60 plus 18 is 27 lakh 60. This will give you the balance sheet total for the liability side. Go for the assets. Non current assets. First one is tangible fixed assets. Tangible fixed assets already existing in RS55. Now I took over 28. That will give you 83 lakhs. Intangible asset. Goodwill. We valued goodwill as 8 lakh 10. And finally your current assets. Already existing in R at 25 lakhs. Plus taken over for 21 lakhs. 46 lakhs. I think this is 137 and 10,000. Check the balance sheet total. 137 and 10. 132. 137. Yes guys, let's turn to the 14th one. Similar question guys. Find some small adjustment there. A and B are summarized balance sheets which are given to you. I'm done. The same information. Profits before interest and tax. Income tax rate. Preference dividend and equity dividend. Balance profits transfer to reserve account. Equity shareholders of both the companies are quoted at Mumbai Stock Exchange. And both the companies are carrying on similar manufacturing activities. A proposes to absorb B on 31st March 2012. And the terms agreed are the 12% preference shareholders of B Limited will receive 10% preference shares of A sufficient enough to increase their present income by 20%. Equity shareholders of B will receive equity shares in A on the following terms. Where the equity shares of B Limited will be valued by applying the earnings per share of B with 60% of the PE of A. Based on the results of 2011-12 of both the companies, market price per share of A is 40. The number of equity shares to be issued will be based on 80% of the market price. So the issue price is not 40, issue price is 80% of 40, 32. In addition to the equity shares, 10% preference shares of A Limited will be issued to the equity shareholders of B to make up for the loss on income 
arising from the above exchange of shares based on the dividend for the year 2011-12. 12% debentures of B Limited are to be paid off at 8% premium by 15% debentures issued at a discount of 10%. So there is a discharge to debenture holders which is given separately. 16,000 is to be paid by A Limited to B Limited for liquidation expenses. Sundry creditors of B Limited include 20,000 due to A and bills receivable discounted by B were all B's acceptance. Fixed assets of both the companies are to be revalued at 20% above the book value and stock is taken over at 10% less than the book value. Statute reserve should be maintained for two more years. There is a statute reserve liable in, there is rather shown in the liability side. For the next two years, there is no increase in the rate of equity dividend anticipated and liquidation expenses are a part of purchase consideration. Find out PC and give the journal entries of A and also the balance sheet. So first time is asking us the journal entries, we will give the journal entries as well. Other than that, just start the question like how we have just done. Come on. We have solved a similar question. Go on. First put on ending PC, then start with PC to preference shareholders. There is some increase which is proposed. So get the preference dividend in the selling company. Then add Preference dividend in B Limited is equal to 12% preference shares of 6 lakhs 72,000. 12% into 6 lakhs is 72. Plus increase in dividend, 20% increase is 14,400. So my preference dividend to the shareholders of B. In A should be 86,400. Preference dividend in A to preference shareholders of B is 86,400. If the yield for preferred per share in A is 10%, then PC to preference shareholders in 10% preference shares of A Limited is 8,64,000. PC in equity shares of A, we need to maintain two columns A and B and calculate what is the EPS. With the information given I can do that. <coughs> what is given is PBIT not PBT. What we are given is PBIT. 
profits before interest and tax is 14 lakh 75000 and 7 lakh 80000 first less interest deduct it so that we get pvt interest check your debentures 15% debentures of 5 lakhs 75000 12% of 5 lakhs is 60000 pvt is 14 lakhs and 7 lakh 20 less taxation at the rate of 40% 40% tax on this will be 5 lakh 60000 Two lakh eighty-eight thousand. That'll give you Pat eight lakh forty four lakhs thirty-two. Deducted by preference dividend Preference dividend in A 10% preference shares for 12 lakhs 1 lakh 20 Preference dividend in B 12% of 6 lakhs 72,000 Profits available to equity shareholders, we call it as PACE divided by number of equity shares will give you EPS of each company. What is PACE? 7,20,000 and 3,60,000. Number of shares a limited has 3,60,000 shares. B limited has 1,80,000 shares. EPS is 2 and 2 in both cases. In both the cases EPS is 2. Now there is no P of B limited given. But he is saying that P of B is 60% of the P of A. So calculate P of A limited. MPS by EPS, what is the MPS given? Market price per share is 40, EPS is 2, P is 20. That is P of A. P of B is 60% of P of A, 60% of 20, P of B is equal to 12. Market price per share of B limited is equal to EPS 2 P 12 24. So PC in equity shares of A is total number of shares 180,000 in shares in B. Each share valued at 24. I think this is 43,20,000. Purchase consideration in equity shares of A is 43,20,000. I guess check 1,80,000 into 24. Yes. Issue price per share in A limited is equal to what did he say? Check the number of shares to be issued to the equity shareholders of B limited will be based on the value of 80% of market price per share. 80% of 40 is 32. 80% of 40 is 32. So 
So number of equity shares to be issued by A limited is equal to divide what answer? Number of equity shares to be issued is 1,35,000. This is the number of equity shares. These equity shares, shareholders, are again given 10% preference shares of A to make good the loss in the dividend like we have seen in the previous question. So what is the equity dividend in B? Mr. B people, B shareholders were receiving an equity dividend of 2,70,000. Equity dividend to shareholders of B after the acquisition. How many shares are they being allotted? 1,35,000 shares are allotted in A. Each share has a face value of 10 rupees. And what is the rate of dividend in A? A declared a dividend of equity dividend of 3,60 on its total paid up share capital of 36 lakhs. The dividend is 10%. One lakh thirty-five thousand is the equity dividend that they'll receive after merger. Their loss in income will be estimated at one lakh thirty-five thousand, with a yield per preference share in A Limited being given as ten percent. PC in preference shares of A Limited is equal to thirteen lakh fifty thousand. My discharge of PC, PC to preference shareholders in 10% preference share capital, 8,64,000. PC to equity shareholders in equity share capital, number of equity shares is 13 1,35,000, 13,50,000. Securities premium is 1,35,000 into 22. 1,35,000 into 22 is 28,70,000. Check, is that right? 29,70,000. Securities premium is 22 rupees per share into 1,35,000. Again in 10% preference share capital to equity shareholders, 13,50,000. Last sentence of the question, something else is also said. Liquidation expenses should be considered as a part of purchase consideration and the liquidation expenses being paid, that is given in point number 4 there, 16,000 is to be paid. Liquidation expenses, 16,000. Total PC, 4 lakhs 50,000 50. 
nature of amalgamation is still purchased because there is a change to the debenture shareholders, the debenture holders, there is also revaluation of assets. First check your discharge to debenture holders then. What is the discharge to debenture holders? Read the point number 3. 12% debentures of B will be paid out at 8% premium by 15% debentures of A issued at a discount of 10%. Come on, check there. What is the debentures in B? Debentures of B are 5 lakhs. They are redeemed at a premium of, they are to be paid off at a premium of 8%. Twelve percent debentures in B. Is five lakhs. They are redeemed at a premium of eight percent. Premium on redemption. Eight percent. 40,000 Redemption value is 5,40,000 Issue price of debenture In A issued at a discount of 10%. So I am assuming the face value is 100. So it will become 90. Number of 15% debentures to be issued. by A limited is equal to 6000 or I can say discharge to debenture holders fifteen percent debentures always debentures should be shown at face value 6,000 6, debentures, each one having a face value of 100. So this will be 6 lakhs. But at the same time, I'll have discount on issue. sixty thousand, 10% discount. The discount on issue can be written off against the securities premium, which we already have in discharge of PC. I can write off those two when you are preparing the balance sheet. You have identified it as nature of amalgamation, then go for your goodwill or capital reserve computation. So get the net assets.
goodwill or capital reserve. Start with your assets. The first of the asset I see is fixed assets. There's some change in the value of the fixed assets. He said fixed assets are revalued upward by 20%. Above book value, 36 lakhs. Next, investments. Nothing given regarding as far as the investments is concerned. I integrated the same value. 5 lakhs. Stock, yes, there is a change. Check there. Stock is to be taken over at 10% uh, lower than the book value. Stock is 1 lakh 20, so sorry, 12 lakhs, so 1 lakh 20 down, 10 lakh 80 is the takeover value. Next comes your debtors. No change as far as your debtors is concerned. Pick up the same value, 12 lakhs. All the intercompany adjustments, not here guys. Intercompany adjustments, while preparing the balance sheet, we will have to adjust them. Not now. You are just calculating the net assets of the selling company. You don't have to consider all your adjustment regarding intercompany owings. Debentures at settlement value, redemption value or the settlement value is the same, 5,40,000. That is it for the net assets. We have to compare it with the PC of 65 lakh 50,000 and we'll identify that as goodwill or it could be a capital reserve. Total of asset is 64 lakh 80,000. Total of liability is 18 lakh 40,000. My total net assets will come up to 46 lakhs 40,000. This will result in a definite goodwill of 19 lakhs 10,000. Check goodwill is 19 lakhs 10,000. Once you got the figure of goodwill or capital reserve, you can go for the balance sheet now. Be careful when you are doing the balance sheet. There are adjustments which will come up for, for your balance sheet is concerned. They are not so simple also like how we have done the previous question. There are some adjustments as far as the balance sheet is concerned. Balance sheet of A limited as on 31st March 2012. Starting with equity and liabilities.
shareholders funds share capital under share capital the first one is equity share capital already existing in a limited 36 lakhs equity share capital now come to the discharge in equity share capital the discharge is 13 lakh 50 thousand so add 13 lakh 50 thousand your equity share capital will look at 49 lakh 50 thousand then I have 10 percent preference share capital already existing 10 percent preference share capital is 12 lakhs plus 8 lakh 64 plus 13 lakh 50 both combined I have to do this is 34 lakhs 14,000 I guess yep thirty four lakhs fourteen thousand come to the reserves and surplus then you have to pick up the reserves carefully securities premium first Securities premium ex existing in the discharge is 29,70 minus discount on issue of debentures 60,000. <laughs> Netted the balance you will get as 29,10,000. Next one is a statutory reserve appearing here. Compulsorily should be taken over even though it was a purchase transaction. We will write amalgamation adjustment on the asset side. Then I have a general reserve as well. Only purchasing company. I did, cannot take over selling company's reserves. 25 lakhs. Do not stop there. I have one more reserve to be written that is revaluation reserve. If you observe carefully, read that point, point number 5. Fix this, it's of both companies are to be revalued at 20% above book value. So both the companies fixed assets are revalued. So for purchasing companies revaluation, you get a revaluation reserve. Check what are the fixed assets of A limited? 50 lakhs, 20% revaluation, fixed assets are 10 lakhs, so revaluation reserve is 10 lakhs. Non-current liabilities. What are the non-current liabilities we have? We have 15% debentures. Already existing in A limited 15% debentures of 5 lakhs. Add 6 lakhs. Total 11 lakhs. Next current liabilities. First of the current liability is creditors. Check there is some adjustment given for the creditors in point number 4. Sundry creditors of B limited include 20,000 due to A. So I can cancel both debtors and creditors by 20,000. First write it off from your creditors. 23,40,000. After, after writing of 20,000. Finally, I have bills payable. Again, there is an adjustment. Bills payable adjustment is in point number 6 again. <clears throat> bills receivable discounted by A were all acceptances by B. If you clearly understand, they are bills receivable discounted. When the term discounted is there, that means the bill is now the property of banker. I can't cancel. If the bill was held by A, then I would have cancelled with the bills receivable and bills payable. 
But here I cannot cancel since it is already discounted. So straightforward we get that 40,000 rupees. Assets non current assets tangible fixed assets both the assets are revalued the total is actually 50 plus 30 80 80 Revalued upward by how much? 20%. 20% upward revaluation, this should be 96 lakhs. Intangible asset goodwill. Nineteen lakhs ten thousand. Other non current assets one is investments ten lakhs, another one is amalgamation adjustment. Don't forget this because we have taken a statute reserve of about one lakh. That same one lakh even on the asset side to be written as amalgamation adjustment account. Finally, the current assets, stock, debtors, bills receivable. Cash and bank stock already existing A stock is 18 lakhs plus B stock taken over 10 lakh 80 18 lakhs plus 10 lakh 80 is 28 lakh 80 thousand debtors we have to reduce the debtors also by 20 thousand which we have already reduced from the creditors so this will be 26 lakhs 80 thousand. Bills receivable, no cancellation, 60,000 as it is. Cash we need to reduce because we are paying liquidation expense of 16,000. So 16,000 liquidation expense is paid. I think this is 2,24,000 I guess. One crore eighty four lakhs fifty four thousand is the balance sheet total.
Yes, guys, he is asking us to pass even the journal entries. Let's see what are the journal entries that we pass. Only in the books of purchasing company. Journal entry in the books of A. First, let's take over the entries. First, take over entries. We'll start with the first entry. We will write it as PC due. Business purchase account debit. To liquidator of B. Business purchase that is a total PC. My total PC is 65 lakhs 50 thousand. Assets and liabilities taken over. You have to check your net assets calculation. Pick up the same entries. Pick up the same ones. Come on. Fixed assets account debit. 36 lakhs. Investments account debit, 5 lakhs, stock account debit, 10 lakhs 80, as it is I am copying guys, how you have calculated your net asset, the same thing, debtors account debit, 12 lakhs, Bills receivable account debit 10,000. Cash in bank account debit 90,000. Done with the debits. Go for the credits then. To bills payable. Twenty thousand. To sundry creditors, twelve lakh eighty thousand. To debentures, is this twelve percent debentures, guys? Is it fifteen percent? Fifteen percent debentures. 15% debentures or write it as to debenture holders otherwise no problem write it as to debenture holders will issue debentures later on to debenture holders my discharge to debenture holder is 5 lakh 40 will issue debentures after this to business purchase PC 65 lakh 50 Balance entry should be goodwill of 19 lakh 10. Goodwill debit 19 lakhs 10,000. Discharge of PC 19 Liquidator of B Account debit sixty five lakh fifty thousand to equity share capital to ten percent preference share capital to securities premium and finally even cash sixteen thousand pay 
liquidation expenses. Equity share capital, we have issued 13,50,000 equity share capital. My preference share capital, 22,14,000. Securities premium, 29,70,000. Cash, 16,000. Tally was discharge. Further entries to be written. Discharge the debenture holders as well. We have credited it to debenture holders, so debit the debenture holder, debenture holders account debit 5,40,000 to 15% debentures, debentures have a value of 6 lakhs, the balance 60,000 we call it as discount. Such discount and issue can be cancelled against the securities premium. Securities premium account debit 60,000 to discount and issue. Sixty thousand. I am cancelling the discount on issue with the securities premium available. So, balance securities premium is only 29,10,000. If you want to continue with the entries, revaluation also we have to record. So, fixed assets account debit to revaluation reserve. I have revalued them upward. Fifty lakh asset. If I'm revaluing twenty percent upward, it is ten lakhs. We have cancelled a debtor and a creditor for twenty thousand. Intercompany owings cancel. Creditor account debit to debtors twenty thousand. That is it for your accounting entries. Let's get the statutory reserve taken over as well. Amalgamation adjustment account debit. One lakh to statutory reserve. Taken over for the same one lakh rupees. Twenty 